years. Um, I'll plonk them down and say they're probably Kiwis. Um, and um, the first two, uh, the first one I thought, they're all kind of, they have a leanness about them. And they're, they're not sort of, you know, they're, they're not really full and lush, which says to me that they come from a slightly cooler year. Um, and that they, that, like the first one, they had a good, good length, they had some brightness to it, um, but it was kind of linear and definitely had a sort of a tannin, um, underlying coil of tannin, which, which sort of dominated and had some sort of darker fruits to it. Um, I actually, I actually kind of like the second wine out of the three, and that's, that's, that probably counter to what um, the people around me liked. And I liked it because it did have lots of acidity, and I, and I really liked that in wine, so I thought that was kind of nice, but definitely it was, the tannin was pronounced on it. It seemed like a warmer site in a cooler year almost. Um, it had some length, again it was kind of lean. Um, if I was to hazard a guess, I'd say certainly the second one was from um, Central. Maybe the first one, but the first one could be like Ripera or Canterbury. You tend to get slight, like a slight sort of herbly edge and, and it can have a coil of tannin as well. Um, the third wine, um, it probably had a little bit more complexity of fruit for me and the nose and, and the palate. Um, again, it was a little bit leaner um, and there was some sort of like herbly sort of rhubarb notes that that I, that I quite like again. I mean, I like acidity in wines. Um, but so, yeah, cooler year, um, new world in style, and you know, probably, probably needs a little bit of lushness, or certainly these things probably need, for me, um, a year or two under their belt to, to soften that out. You know, the, 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 the appeal in the wines to me would be that they'll be pretty, you know, that they're never going to be blockbusters, but they can be quite pretty wines, but they, they all appear to be in a bit of a hole. So I'm guessing they're all pretty similar vintage. I guess, uh, Let's sort of go through uh, the uh, fourth wine, so the first one on the left. What a big, grunty kind of style of wine for me. Um, it sort of took, it's not, I guess not sort of my style of wine in terms of the flavour spectrum. Um, a little bit hot for me, it's, it's certainly New World, could be uh, not too far away, I suspect. Um, really sort of slightly extracted style. And, and some people like a big and that's definitely a food wine. And for that, I mean, it needs something to soak up the, the, the tannin, it's put alcohol in there. I mean, it needs something to take all those things on board. And if you have that, it actually pairs much better. Um, certainly worked with the, with the beef a little bit more. Um, as soon as you had that, the wine actually turned into a slightly different beast. Um, the second wine I really liked. Um, it had sort of lovely sweet sort of cherry notes, sweet fruit, it was really delicate, um, had really good length, um, and nice sort of really, you know, really delicate, light, pretty wine. I thought, I thought, it, was, I thought it was good. Um, both of those, New World, uh, both of those, for me, probably Kiwi and, and certainly maybe the first one pretty close to where I'm from. Um, the third wine I thought was probably um, outside that. It was it had a sort of a grainy, fine tannins to it, uh, which I which I quite like. It um, had some nice length. It was almost sort of a stemmy character that slightly um, threw me, but um, also sort of a kind of really nice sort of bacon fatty gig going on. I, I actually quite liked it because it was different. Suddenly you were sort of tasting a different style of wine, and uh, and I jumped onto it for the sort of the graininess of it. Um, where was it from? I'm not so sure. I'd say it was probably a bit further north out of um, New Zealand, so probably I was, I was moving to the US or, or maybe some um, part of Australia, but I guess. Well, there was three pretty different wines here for me. Did you smell like any? Um, no? Yeah. The first one um, had some sort of nice, good chewiness at the beginning. I was kind of, I was really hoping this was going to deliver a little bit more than it ended up doing. Um, it's sort of a slight barnyardy character at the front, and the front palette sort of was like, oh yeah, and then it just kind of faded away. Um, the, the palette sort of just disappeared, it was sort of sinewy, a little bit of hotness. So it was kind of like, for me, it was a wine that sort of had some potential, and was either you know, a little work too hard to try and get too much out of it, um, to make it a little bit more serious, and it probably never was that um, serious style of wine. I kind of liked it. But it just sort of faded out, and really it was a little bit disappointing from that um, perspective. 
Um, the, the second one, um, it's got some sort of uh, herbally minty um, gig going on, which, which I, you know, I don't, I don't actually mind, I don't, but, but it, that was probably the best part of it. Um, uh, it's like a chocolate mint. It had an iron fist, well, I said, with no, no velvet in there. Um, big towns, it was slightly warmer, stemmier, um, you know, it, it, was, um, it was pretty hard to um, like it too much from my perspective. Um, <laughs> It's so kind. You know, yeah, yeah, just let like base it. It's okay, fine. Okay. <laughs> I hated it. <laughs> um, the third one was uh, definitely an outlier from the from the first two. Um, it, it was a little bit older, I thought. Uh, maybe not, not that old, sort of you know, five, six um, years, maybe. Um, it definitely lost some of its obvious sort of fruit characters. I figured that to be um, um, definitely up north as opposed to down south. Um, so old, old world as opposed to new world. Um, had a sort of a linearness and some chewiness to it. Really nice acidity for me. Uh, had quite a lot of acidity, for, so maybe for some, too much for some people. A really nice solid wine. The same sort of gig throughout the palate, front to back. So yeah, I, I quite like the lines I found kind of, they were a little bit brutal for me. Um, uh, certainly sort of muscular and, uh, and definitely, uh, uh, not that I'm not, not a good Kiwi bloke or anything like that, but um, you know, a little, a little bit, a little bit muscular. Like the first one, I thought it was uh, either New World or Old World going New World style. Um, yeah, it's sort of bright, so it was kind of insular, so it was sort of you know, uh, um, inward looking. Uh, there was some you know, sort of savoury, meaty notes in there, and darker, sort of tarry notes, but um, <coughs> it didn't really grab me from a style perspective, but um, it was okay. Uh, the second one, um, you know, it was a bigger wine, definitely a richer style, it had, had a lot going on in terms of depth, um, and it definitely needed a little bit more time. The tannins were sort of pulling out at the end, um, but it had plenty of um, concentration. But again, um, you know, quite rich in style. Uh, the third one, uh, well, I said minty freshness. Um, <laughs> it had it had hallmarks of that Australian one, but it didn't seem quite so um, intense as that. So I almost thought it was like a kiwi version. Um, but it so had a good, warmer climate kiwi good, version. Uh, well, Canterbury. yeah, yeah Canterbury, Canterbury kind of yeah, yeah. maybe. Bottom of the North Island. Um, but it had good length and it was really consistent throughout. So if you uh, like the flavour, I thought it was actually quite, a, you know, not a not a bad wine at all. If you like the if you like that flavour, it was a good wine for me. You know, um, good length, texture, but very pronounced again on the palate. Yeah, yeah that, that same minty freshness. Okay. He's less. never coming back again. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't, I couldn't be, uh, uh, the first two wines for me were kind of similar, I thought. He's in a cab. Um, uh, the first one was definitely like, driven by acidity, pretty simple fruit, um, and uh, it wasn't too much going. It was nice and pleasant, but it, it wasn't a lot, it wasn't, it wasn't too much to it, I didn't think. Uh, second wine, a little, quite similar profile in, in, in a lot of ways. A little bit more complexity, a little bit more fruit fruit. It seemed a little bit riper, but it was still in that same sort of lighter, cheerier fruit. Cherry fruit stuff, reasonable length to it. Third wine, uh, definitely a bit richer and riper, and, and, and a, a different, different mo. Um, I, I quite like the third wine. Um, wasn't a huge wine at all, but nice and pleasant. And um, you know, it, it had a sort of, um, it was really honest sort of wine. It wasn't trying to be anything, um, anything that that it wasn't in the sense that they weren't trying to extract too much or there wasn't um, anything. No, they weren't trying to, trying to make a really uber serious wine. So um, just reflecting the terroir, really. And then, yeah, I guess so. You know, yeah. I, I, it had a little bit of softness and a little bit of texture to it. So, okay, Toby, you're on. I might find some things underneath it that I liked, but it had some definite problems. So, for me, I would look at that from a wine keeping point of view and just go, uh, that particular bottle's got something, you know not quite right with it. I'd like to know what it is and if somebody's tasted it before and um, see what they think about it. Um, so, yeah, I would say that for me it's a, I don't like the wine, it's faulty. I'd bag it. Okay. <laughs>